Have you ever felt like there's something special about your relationship with God? Maybe you've experienced moments of deep connection, times when you felt His presence so strongly it brought you to tears. Or perhaps you've faced challenges and felt a divine hand guiding you through. What if I told you these experiences are signs that you are one of God's chosen ones? Imagine this, you're driving home late at night, exhausted and alone. The road is dark and you're barely keeping your eyes open. Suddenly, a car swerves into your lane, heading straight for you. Your heart races as you brace for impact. But at the last second, the other car corrects its path, narrowly missing you. You pull over, your hands shaking, realizing you've just been saved from a terrible accident. As you sit there, catching your breath, you feel an overwhelming sense of peace and gratitude wash over you. It's as if a divine hand was protecting you, guiding you to safety. This isn't just luck, it's a sign of God's protection over you. Or think about a time when you were facing a tough decision, one that kept you up at night. Maybe it was a choice about your career, your relationships, or a major life change. You prayed and prayed, but the answers didn't come. Then, out of nowhere, you felt a nudge, a gentle push in a certain direction. Suddenly, things started to fall into place. Opportunities opened up, and clarity replaced your confusion. It wasn't just a coincidence, it was God's guidance, showing you the way when you needed it most. These moments are not random, they are beautiful signs that you are chosen by God. They are reminders that you have a special place in His heart and His plans. In today's video, we are going to explore seven amazing things that only happen to the chosen ones of God. These are experiences that go beyond the ordinary, experiences that can transform your life and deepen your faith. So, stay with us as we uncover these powerful signs. If you've ever wondered about your connection with God or felt His presence in a profound way, this video is for you. Let's embark on this journey together and discover what it truly means to be chosen by God. You won't want to miss this. The first thing that happens to the chosen ones is that they hear God's voice. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Does this mean you literally hear a voice speaking to you? For some, it might be. But for many of us, hearing God's voice comes in different forms. It could be a strong feeling in your heart, a gentle nudge in a certain direction, or a thought that you know isn't your own. It's God guiding you, comforting you, and giving you direction. Let's think about this for a moment. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt an overwhelming sense of peace or certainty about a decision? Maybe you were facing a tough choice, and out of nowhere, the answer just seemed to come to you. Or perhaps you've been in a moment of deep prayer or reflection, and you felt a calm assurance that everything was going to be okay. These are all ways that God speaks to His chosen ones. The Bible gives us many examples of people hearing God's voice in various ways. One of the most famous stories is that of Moses. Remember when Moses encountered the burning bush? God spoke to him directly from the flames, calling him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses wasn't sure at first. He doubted himself and his abilities. But God's voice was clear and persistent, guiding Moses to fulfill his divine purpose. In our lives today, God may not speak to us through a burning bush, but His voice can be just as clear if we are open to hearing it. It requires us to be still and listen. In the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, it can be challenging to find quiet moments to connect with God. But when we do, we can hear Him speaking to us in the depths of our hearts. I remember hearing a story about a woman who was facing a major life decision. She had two job offers, and both seemed like good opportunities. She prayed and prayed for guidance, but felt torn. One day, while she was sitting quietly in her garden, she felt a gentle nudge to call a friend she hadn't spoken to in a while. During their conversation, her friend mentioned something about one of the companies that made her realize it wasn't the right fit for her. That nudge to make the call was God's way of guiding her to the right choice. Hearing God's voice, 
is not just about big decisions, though. It can happen in the small, everyday moments, too. Perhaps you feel prompted to reach out to someone you haven't seen in a while, only to find out they really needed a friend at that moment. Or maybe you feel a sudden urge to pray for someone, and later you find out they were going through a tough time and needed those prayers. These experiences remind us that we are not alone. God is always with us, speaking to us, guiding us. If you've experienced this in your own life, it's a beautiful sign that you are one of His chosen. It means you have a special connection with Him, and He is actively involved in your life. So, the next time you feel that gentle nudge, that strong feeling, or that unexpected thought, take a moment to pause and listen. It could very well be God's voice guiding you on your journey. Embrace it, cherish it, and know that you are deeply loved and chosen by Him. The second thing that happens to the chosen ones is that they experience divine protection. God watches over His chosen ones in ways we can't always see or understand. This protection can manifest in many forms, whether it's a miraculous escape from danger, a comforting presence in times of fear, or an inexplicable sense of peace during a crisis. Let's start with a story from the Bible that beautifully illustrates God's divine protection. Do you remember the story of Daniel in the lion's den? Daniel was thrown into a den of hungry lions because he refused to stop praying to God. It was a situation that seemed impossible to survive. But Daniel had faith, and God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. Daniel emerged unharmed, a powerful testament to God's protection over his chosen ones. Now, you might be thinking, that's an ancient story. Does God still protect his people like that today? The answer is yes. God's protection is timeless, and there are countless modern-day examples of his divine intervention. Take, for example, the story of a man named John. John was driving home late one night when his car skidded off the road. He lost control, and his car began to roll down a steep embankment. Miraculously, his car came to a stop just inches away from a deep ravine. When help arrived, they couldn't believe he had survived such a dangerous accident without a scratch. John later said that during the crash, he felt an overwhelming sense of peace and protection, as if unseen hands were guiding and cushioning him. This was no coincidence. It was God's divine protection. Divine protection doesn't always involve dramatic rescues. Sometimes it's the small, quiet moments where we feel God's presence the most. Imagine walking through a dark alley, feeling scared and vulnerable. Suddenly, you feel a warm sense of peace wash over you, and you just know that you are not alone. That's God's protection, providing comfort and reassurance in a moment of fear. Another example is the story of Maria. One night, armed bandits invaded the village, and everyone was terrified. Maria prayed fervently for God's protection. As the bandits approached her home, they suddenly turned and left without explanation. Later, one of the villagers asked the bandits why they spared Maria's home. They replied that they saw large, powerful men standing guard around her house. But there were no guards. It was God's angels protecting her. These stories remind us that God's protection is real and ever-present. Even when we face danger or uncertainty, we can trust that He is watching over us. His protection might not always be visible, but it is always there. He promises to keep His chosen ones safe, whether through miraculous interventions or a quiet sense of peace. So, if you've experienced a close call, an unexpected rescue, or a sudden peace in the midst of fear, take it as a sign of God's protection over you. He loves you deeply and is committed to keeping you safe. Remember the words of Psalm 91, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. God's protection is a beautiful and powerful sign that you are one of His chosen. Embrace it, trust in it, and let it fill you with peace and confidence as you walk through life. Number three is unexplainable peace. 
This is one of the most beautiful and reassuring signs of being chosen by God. Life can be incredibly tough. We all face challenges, uncertainties, and storms that can shake us to our core. But the chosen ones of God experience a special kind of peace that doesn't make sense in the natural world. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding, and it comes from knowing that God is in control, no matter what. Let's dive into what this peace looks like. Imagine being in the midst of a chaotic situation. Everything around you is falling apart, and everyone is panicking. But deep inside, you feel a calm and steady assurance that things will be okay. This isn't because the situation has magically resolved itself, but because you trust that God is handling it. This is the unexplainable peace that God gives to His chosen ones. There is a beautiful story in the Bible that perfectly illustrates this kind of peace. It's the story of Jesus calming the storm. Jesus and his disciples were in a boat when a furious storm arose. The disciples were terrified, fearing for their lives, but Jesus was asleep in the boat. They woke him, crying out for help. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and there was a great calm. Then he turned to his disciples and asked, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? This story shows us that even in the midst of a literal storm, Jesus was at peace because he knew that God was in control. This same peace is available to us today. I remember hearing about a woman named Sarah who experienced this peace firsthand. Sarah was diagnosed with a serious illness and the news was devastating. Naturally, she was scared and worried about the future. But as she prayed and sought God's presence, she began to feel a deep sense of peace. It was a peace that didn't make sense given her circumstances, but it filled her heart and mind, allowing her to face each day with hope and courage. She described it as a warm embrace, a reassurance that no matter what happened, she was in God's hands. Unexplainable peace isn't just for moments of crisis. It can be a daily experience, a steady undercurrent that flows through our lives. This peace allows us to navigate life's ups and downs with a calm and confident spirit. It's like having a strong anchor that keeps us grounded, no matter how rough the seas may get. When we are chosen by God, His peace becomes a part of who we are, shaping our responses and attitudes in every situation. Another powerful example is the testimony of a man named Michael. Michael lost his job unexpectedly and was facing financial hardship. Despite the uncertainty and the pressures of providing for his family, Michael experienced an unexplainable peace. He shared that every time he prayed, he felt a reassuring presence that everything would work out. And it did. He found a new job that was even better than the one he lost. This peace gave him the strength to keep going and to trust in God's provision. This unexplainable peace is a gift to God's chosen ones. It's a sign of His presence and His promise that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the peace that we can hold on to no matter what life throws our way. So, if you've ever felt a calm in the midst of chaos, a peace that doesn't match your circumstances, know that it's a precious gift from God. It's a sign that you are one of His chosen ones. Embrace this peace, let it fill your heart, and trust that God is always in control. This unexplainable peace is one of the most beautiful ways that God shows His love and care for us. The fourth sign is spiritual gifts. This is an exciting and empowering aspect of being chosen by God. When God calls you, He doesn't leave you empty-handed. He equips His chosen ones with special abilities and talents, known as spiritual gifts, to help others and build His kingdom. These gifts are unique to each person and are given to us so we can fulfill our divine purpose. 
Let's start with what spiritual gifts are. The Bible talks about these gifts in several places, but one of the most detailed explanations is found in 1 Corinthians 12. Here, the Apostle Paul lists different gifts, such as wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Each of these gifts serves a specific purpose and contributes to the greater good of the community. Think about it. Have you discovered a special talent or passion that you use to serve others? Maybe you have a knack for understanding and teaching complex concepts, or perhaps you have a compassionate heart that leads you to care for the sick and needy. These are not just random skills. They are spiritual gifts given to you by God. Consider the story of the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Before this event, they were a group of ordinary men, unsure and often fearful. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were transformed. They began to speak in different languages, heal the sick, and preach with boldness and wisdom. These gifts empowered them to spread the message of Jesus and build the early church. In our lives today, we may not always experience such dramatic transformations, but the principle remains the same. God gives us spiritual gifts to empower us and to help us fulfill His plans. Let me share with you a story of a modern-day believer, Jessica, who discovered her spiritual gift. Jessica always had a way with words. She could comfort and encourage others with just a few sentences. She thought it was just a personality trait, but as she grew in her faith, she realized it was a spiritual gift of encouragement. Jessica began to write letters and notes to people in her church who were going through tough times. Her words brought hope and healing to many. She eventually started a blog where she shares her faith and encouragement with a wider audience. Jessica's gift has touched countless lives and brought many closer to God. Spiritual gifts are not just for the benefit of the individual. They are meant to be shared and used to serve others. When we use our gifts, we become vessels of God's love and power. It's like being part of a body where each part has a unique function, but all work together for the well-being of the whole. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Another powerful example is the story of Thomas, a businessman who discovered his spiritual gift of leadership. Thomas always had a talent for organizing and inspiring teams. He thought it was just a professional skill, but as he prayed and sought God's guidance, he realized it was a spiritual gift. Thomas began to use his leadership skills to organize community outreach programs through his church. His ability to bring people together and motivate them led to successful projects that helped many in need. Thomas's gift of leadership made a significant impact on his community. Discovering and using our spiritual gifts is a joyful and fulfilling part of being chosen by God. It's a way for us to partner with Him in His work and to make a difference in the lives of others. If you haven't yet discovered your spiritual gift, pray and ask God to reveal it to you. Look at the passions and talents you have and consider how they might be used for His glory. So. If you have found yourself with a special talent or passion that you use to help others, rejoice. This is one of the signs that you are chosen by God. Embrace your spiritual gifts. Use them with love and humility, and watch how God works through you to bless others and build His kingdom. Your gifts are a precious part of God's plan. Number five might surprise you. It's spiritual battles. Yes, the Chosen Ones often face intense challenges and temptations. This might seem counterintuitive at first. We might think that being chosen by God means a life of ease and blessing. But the reality is, the closer we get to God, the more the enemy tries to oppose us. This is because the enemy knows you are important to God's plan and wants to stop you. These battles are difficult but they are also a powerful sign that you are chosen by God. Let's talk about what spiritual battles are. Spiritual battles 
are struggles that go beyond the physical world. They involve our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. They can come in the form of doubts, fears, temptations, or even direct attacks on our faith. These battles are real, and they can be very intense. But the good news is, God gives us the strength to overcome them. A classic example from the Bible is the story of Job. Job was a righteous man who loved God deeply. But he faced incredible trials. He lost his family, his wealth, and his health. Despite all this, Job remained faithful to God. He struggled, he questioned, and he suffered, but he never turned away from God. In the end, God restored everything Job had lost and blessed him even more than before. Job's story shows us that spiritual battles are part of the journey for those who are chosen by God. In our own lives, spiritual battles can take many forms. Sometimes, it's a battle with temptation. Other times, it might be a struggle with doubt or fear. We might face criticism or persecution for our faith. These challenges can be very tough. But remember, facing these battles is a sign that you are important to God's plan. The enemy wouldn't bother with you if you weren't a threat to his schemes. Let me share the story of David, a young man who faced many spiritual battles. David was chosen by God to be the king of Israel, but before he could take the throne, he faced many challenges. He was pursued by King Saul, who wanted to kill him. He lived as a fugitive, hiding in caves and constantly on the run. Despite these hardships, David remained faithful to God. He wrote many of the Psalms during this time, expressing his trust in God even in the darkest moments. David's faithfulness in the face of spiritual battles is a powerful example for us. In modern times, we also face spiritual battles. I remember hearing the story of Anna, a devoted Christian who struggled with depression. She felt overwhelmed and distant from God, despite her deep faith. But Anna chose to fight back with prayer, scripture, and the support of her church community. Over time, she began to feel God's presence again and overcame her depression. Anna's story reminds us that spiritual battles are real, but with God's help, we can overcome them. It's important to equip ourselves for these battles. Ephesians 6, 10, 18 talks about the armor of God. It describes the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. These are spiritual tools that God gives us to stand strong against the enemy. When we put on the full armor of God, we are prepared to face any challenge that comes our way. Facing spiritual battles is never easy, but it is a part of being chosen by God. It means that you are valuable to his kingdom and a threat to the enemy. Remember, you are not alone in these battles. God is with you, giving you strength and courage. He promises never to leave you nor forsake you. So, if you find yourself in the midst of a spiritual battle, take heart. It is a sign that you are chosen by God. Trust in Him, lean on His strength, and know that He will see you through. Victory is assured because God is on your side. The sixth is a deep hunger for God's Word. For the chosen ones of God, the Bible isn't just another book. It's a source of life, guidance, and profound joy. They find themselves drawn to its pages, eager to learn more about God and His will for their lives. This deep longing to read and understand the Bible is a beautiful sign of being one of God's chosen. Let's start by looking at why this hunger for God's Word is so significant. The Bible is often referred to as God's love letter to humanity. It contains His promises, His commandments, and His revelations. For those who are chosen by God, the Bible becomes a lifeline, a way to connect with Him on a deeper level. They find comfort, wisdom, and direction in its pages, and it becomes an integral part of their daily lives. King David, one of the most beloved figures in the Bible, expressed this deep hunger for God's Word 
in many of his psalms. In Psalm 119, 105, he says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. David understood God's word was essential for guiding his life. He treasured it, meditated on it, and found strength in its truths. The same passion for scripture is a hallmark of the chosen ones. Consider the story of Mary, a young woman who discovered her deep hunger for God's word during a challenging time in her life. Mary was going through a difficult season, feeling lost and unsure of her future. One day, she decided to open her Bible and read. What started as a small act of desperation quickly became a daily habit. She found herself eagerly awaiting her quiet time with God, soaking in His words and finding peace and direction. Mary's experience is a testament to the transforming power of God's Word and the deep hunger it can ignite in our hearts. This hunger for God's Word often manifests as a longing to read and study the Bible more deeply. It's not just about skimming through verses, but truly understanding and applying them to our lives. The Chosen Ones find joy in learning about the context, history, and deeper meanings behind the scriptures. They seek out Bible studies, sermons, and resources to help them grow in their understanding. This desire to delve deeper is a sign of their connection to God and their desire to align their lives with His will. Another powerful example is the story of John, a businessman who found himself longing for more in his spiritual life. Despite his busy schedule, John felt a persistent nudge to spend more time in God's Word. He started waking up early to read his Bible and found that it completely transformed his days. The insights he gained from Scripture helped him make better decisions, strengthened his relationships, and gave him a sense of purpose. John's deep hunger for God's Word was a clear sign of his chosen status and his desire to live according to God's plan. This deep hunger for God's Word is not just about personal growth. It's also about sharing the truth and love found in the Scriptures with others. The Chosen Ones often feel a strong desire to teach, share, and encourage others through God's Word. They understand that the Bible is a powerful tool for spreading God's message and bringing hope to the world. This passion for sharing the Word is another beautiful sign of their connection to God. The Bible is described in Hebrews 4, 12 as living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. For the Chosen Ones, this living Word becomes a constant companion, a source of strength and a guide for their lives. They find that no matter what they are going through, God's Word speaks to them, offering comfort, guidance, and hope. So, if you find yourself with a deep hunger for God's Word, rejoice. This is a beautiful sign that you are one of His chosen. Embrace this hunger, feed it with daily reading and study, and let God's Word transform your life. This longing to know God more deeply through His Word is a precious gift and a testament to your special connection with Him. Let it guide you, inspire you, and strengthen you as you walk your journey of faith. Finally, the Chosen Ones radiate God's love. This is one of the most beautiful and visible signs of being chosen by God. It's something that people around you can see and feel. It's in the way you act, the way you speak, and the way you treat others. The Chosen Ones carry God's love with them wherever they go, spreading light even in the darkest places. Let's start with what it means to radiate God's love. Radiating God's love is about letting His love shine through you in all that you do. It's about being kind, compassionate, and forgiving. It's about loving others the way Jesus loves unconditionally and selflessly. When you radiate God's love, people around you can't help but notice. They see something different in you, something beautiful and inspiring. One of the best examples of radiating God's love is Jesus himself. Everywhere Jesus went, he spread love and compassion. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and comforted the brokenhearted. His love was so powerful that it changed lives and transformed hearts. As his followers, 
we are called to do the same. We are called to be His hands and feet in this world, showing His love to everyone we meet. Consider the story of Mother Teresa, a modern-day example of someone who radiated God's love. Mother Teresa dedicated her life to serving the poor and needy. Her selfless love and compassion touched countless lives and brought hope to those who had none. She once said, Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. This simple yet profound statement reminds us that it's not about the size of our actions, but the love we put into them. Let's talk about how this looks in our everyday lives. Radiating God's love doesn't always mean doing big, dramatic things. It can be as simple as a smile, a kind word, or a helping hand. It's about being present and attentive to the needs of others. It's about being patient and understanding, even when it's hard. It's about showing grace and forgiveness, just as we have received from God. Take the story of Sarah, a school teacher who radiates God's love in her classroom. Sarah makes it a point to show each of her students that they are valued and loved. She listens to them, encourages them, and supports them in their struggles. Her students often say that being in her class feels like being part of a family. Sarah's love and care have made a lasting impact on their lives, and many of them look back on their time in her class with fond memories. Another example is Michael, a man who radiates God's love in his workplace. Michael always goes out of his way to help his colleagues. He is known for his kindness, his willingness to listen, and his positive attitude. When someone is having a tough day, Michael is the one who lifts their spirits. His actions may seem small, but they make a big difference. His colleagues often say that the office feels brighter and more positive because of him. Radiating God's love is about being a light in the world. In Matthew 5, 14, 16, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. As chosen ones, we are called to let our light shine, to radiate God's love so that others can see and be drawn to Him. So, if you have ever been told that you bring joy and comfort to others, take it as a sign that you are radiating God's love. This is a beautiful testament to your special connection with Him. Embrace this gift and continue to let His love shine through you. In a world that can often feel dark and challenging, your light is needed more than ever. Keep spreading God's love and watch how it transforms lives, including your own. So, there you have it, the seven amazing things that only happen to the chosen ones of God. If you've seen these signs in your life, rejoice. You are deeply loved and chosen by God. Embrace these experiences as beautiful gifts and let them strengthen your faith and your walk with Him. But don't stop here. Keep seeking God, keep listening for His voice, keep trusting in His protection, and keep finding peace in His presence. Use your spiritual gifts to serve others, stand strong in spiritual battles, hunger for His Word, and most importantly, let His love radiate through you. If this message has touched your heart, please share this video with others. There are many people out there who need to hear this encouragement and be reminded of God's love and calling. Your simple act of sharing can make a big difference in someone's life. Also, don't forget to like this video, comment below, and subscribe to our channel for more uplifting and inspiring content. We'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. How have you seen these signs in your life? Let's create a community of encouragement and support where we can grow together in our faith. Remember, being chosen by God is a precious and powerful thing. Let's walk boldly in our calling, knowing that He is always with us, guiding us, protecting us, and loving us. Thank you so much for watching.
May God bless you richly and fill your life, peace, and joy. Until next time, stay blessed and keep shining his light. Goodbye, dear friends.